truth, lies, shenanigans. Start us off, buddy. All right. So round one on SCOTUS. Um, so on June 23rd, this past Thursday, the Supreme Court of the United States struck down a New York state law that had been on the books since 1911 that required anyone requesting a license to carry a gun outside of their homes to have a proper cause to do so. So essentially, no more license required for a concealed carry in New York. So this was a six to three decision, and the court ruled that the law violated the Second Amendment. And clearly, this is a huge victory for gun rights activists who had historically challenged New York's restrictive gun law. And I'm asking you, does this really make New York citizens more or less safe from gun violence and your reactions to this decision? What do you think, Johnny? So uh, the simple answer to me is yes. Uh, I believe that if there were less guns, there would be less gun violence. That that makes sense. However, I do. It's, it's such a touchy, touchy, touchy subject, and I always, always go back and forth with it because I own a gun legally, and I feel like people, if they want to and are qualified for it, should own a gun. So. And that's not to say that New York isn't making it so that people don't own a gun. It's just they're making it hard for people to own a gun. And I understand because New York is carry. Mm-hmm. crime is disgusting out there. But um, to answer your question, Rob, I, I do believe that um, the the Supreme Court's decision. I don't I don't believe they made a right decision with that one. They dropped the ball on that, in my opinion. So so you don't think, uh, so Johnny? Just to be clear, so you like guns right you're interested i mean you 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 like being able to own a gun wait let me clarify you like being able to own a gun right but you don't feel like the conceal and carry gun law in new york is you think that it was the wrong decision for them to strike that down yeah i think it was a wrong for them to strike it down i fully i feel like you should have the ability i mean you should be the conceal and carry just means you need to be licensed right to Carry a gun. Yep. Conceal. Yep. Yeah. I, that's fine. <laughs> you're, you're okay. Okay. I, yeah. All right. I agree with that. But the yeah. reason I think picky is because people feel like they're like if you're like pro gun, it's it's so like like extremist. Like you're pro gun or anti gun. I think that some of the laws should be implemented to keep the right people holding guns. Um, my opinion. Okay, real quick comments online. Oh, why, Mike Winter, uh, they do not care that these cities will be full of crazy people with guns. Uh, there was just a crazy dude in the subway shooting people for no reason. You can own it, but why the hell do people need to be carrying around a gun all the time? As they says, but why own a gun? All right, so um, here are my thoughts on the gun law and Supreme Court. Um, there's an inherent problem with the gun laws because I remember DC had a similar issue um, not too long ago where they passed gun, where they passed laws restricting the purchase of guns and the conceal and carry laws. Um, and the problem is that there is the, is the Second Amendment. I mean, it explicitly states that you have a right to bear arms. I mean, it's not unclear. It's very straightforward. It says it. And, you know, even with a liberal Supreme Court, you know, at the time, they shot down D.C.'s law because it's explicit in the Constitution, which is the founding document of our country. Um, now, is it antiquated? Should it be gone? Absolutely. I mean, we need to, we need to uh, you know, we, uh, Jacqueline Robinson talked about the repeal of, you know, we had the prohibition was an amendment, right? And then we had the repeal of prohibition, which was an amendment. Nothing wrong with amending the Second Amendment and um, changing it. So, Neo, just really, I mean, a point of clarification. The Second Amendment really just says that the U.S. needs to regulate a, and to have a, a standing militia. And that being the case, it's a security thing, and you have the right to bear arms, and your right to bear arms will not be infringed. So, good news you have one of the top militaries in the world. So you don't need to worry about the evil king of England coming and taking away your rights and privileges. 
you don't have to worry about foreign nations landing on U.S. soil because everybody knows that that's the big stick. You and Russia, those are the big sticks and China. So stay the fuck away from those places. You don't land people there. And so you don't need a standing militia. You don't need all of your citizens to be armed. You don't need citizens who have the ability to amass guns, ammunition, who have the ability to go to the beach and decide that they're going to bring their gun. What the fuck? Why are you bringing a gun to the beach in case that pesky shark comes at you? No, come on. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not disagreeing with you as, as to your reasoning. What I'm saying is the problem with the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court didn't make the wrong decision. Unfortunately, I don't, I'm not sure that the Supreme Court made the wrong decision. I, I, my thing is, the problem is with the lawmakers. The problem lies with the lawmakers. The, the lawmakers, it's not the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, I think, may have made the right decision here on this one. Okay. But um, the, right, Johnny? With, with the law in New York, I thought that they shot down the law that said that you had to have a reason, like a good enough reason to have that gun if you were questioned. Yeah, so a, li a license to carry a weapon outside of your household. So now they struck that down. So you don't need a license to carry a gun outside of your household. That's to give reason, to provide reason. And then they license you for that use. But now that's no longer the case. You no longer need that license to carry your weapon outside of your household. Yeah. More I mean, okay. I mean, I do, it feels guys, like they are overstepping. I mean, Mike Winter says that, you know, it's, it's literally one sentence, which it is. So it's not. And the problem with that being the one sentence is you have to read into it a lot. <laughs> you know, how do you really interpret it? You know, you it, it's pretty straightforward. You have the right to bear arms. Boom. Right. And, and so you're like, OK. What does that entail? I mean, they weren't thinking about licenses back then. They weren't thinking about conceal and carry. They weren't thinking about mass shootings and and all the things that we deal with. What I'm saying is I'm not sure the Supreme Court made the wrong decision. I'm just saying I think the lawmakers need to make better decisions. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. The lawmakers need to. Re I would repeal altogether the Second Amendment and or at least modified significantly um so you yeah. feel people shouldn't have guns in this country at all i'm um, i'm a little torn people having guns for hunting and leisure that's you know what if you if you belong to a gun club if you enjoy skeet shooting and your gun is properly stored at the facility and they're responsible for it if you enjoy hunting and your firearms are locked up properly, you're properly licensed for it, and you're trained for it, then absolutely go for it. But for a stroll in the park, to go <laughs> shopping, I don't need to be strapped. And I, that's coming from a privileged lens living in Canada, because we have, very, we have a di very different outlook on gun regulation. And what that's sucks true. with you is that you know, what about the other states and territories that currently have restrict concealed carry permits, similar to what New York did? They're absolutely at risk. And what scares me is that your federal government will not have blanket laws to protect its citizens. The individual states, like Neil was saying, the individual states and the governors have an ethical duty to enact laws to protect their citizens because of what's going on right now. I've ripped on the insanity of American gun culture, and that insanity clearly has made its way to your highest court. Yeah, I'm just not sure that it can be. I just wish they would amend. Uh, they would amend the Second Amendment so that, like you say, states can then make decisions. I think some states will make bad decisions, like they can. They make like Texas and Florida. Obviously, they'll make bad decisions for their laws. Um, I mean, but to your question, Gianni, I'm not sure that. You know. If I have states like Texas and Florida and people in Texas and Florida, you know, loading up on guns and I have no protection myself, you know, I feel a little naked. You know, I feel a little vulnerable. Um, mm -hmm. So as to your answer of should I not have the right to have a gun, I think I should. I, I just think that they need to be if we. Or should you be protected from somebody's right to purchase 
these weapons. Unfortunately, Rob, if, the if problem is I live in a country where I don't trust the police. Yeah, we kind of do. To protect it's a, that's, it's a different Michael culture. That too. Yeah, we don't trust. It's kind of like we don't trust even, like, I, I don't know. I, I wish I kind of grew up in the, like you said, Rob, like a little bit of more of a privilege of the community. And you can, uh, not to say that you can trust your government or your country, but you kind of can in some degree. You, I don't know if you can, but I just feel like where I come from, the people that I know, they do not trust anybody, <laughs> barely anybody, even in their family. So it's like for them to not have a gun wouldn't even make, that's not even, it's just almost a survival thing. And I kind of understand um, how we have to shift our mind and shift to that. I think idealistically there would be no guns, but in this in this climate now, it's still it's still that type of mindset where it's like it's survival. Just, and yeah, it's, it's a tough. It's, no, you're great. It's a tough. It's a tough thing to like to weigh. You know, like I don't feel safe. The police don't make me feel safe. I I was in D.C. last night for a Corinne Bailey Ray concert, by the way, which I loved. <laughs> <laughs> if everybody, I mean, Liz, Liz has made it clear. You know, I love me some Corinne Bailey Ray, but. You know, there was all these police around and things like that. And, you know, not that I'm not, you know, I've been pulled over by the police and, and even recently. And I'm like, it's just not a pleasant feeling. And I don't trust that police have my best interest in mind. And if I'm looking for protections, I don't trust that they'll be able, they'll protect me the way I need to be protected from, you know, I, I just don't trust it. Um, so that's, 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 that's the only reason I'm torn, really. Yeah. If, if we had a country where I, I felt comfortable, where the police are protecting their people the way they should be, then I could feel you on, okay, no, nobody really needs a gun. We're good. Um, let me see. We, let, me, let me go through these comments. There's a lot. Um, a whole lot, yeah. Mike Winter, a well-regulated militia uh, is how the Second Amendment started, right? Um, George Fournier, we are no longer in the Wild West where such laws made sense. I'm tired of hearing about the right to bear arms. Kill you. Mm -hmm. um, the quickest, uh, this is Jacqueline Robinson, the quickest way to put gun restrictions in place is to have a black gun owners organization that believes in the letter of the law of the Second Amendment as well as open carry laws. Those restrictions would be put in place <laughs> quick, fast, and in a hurry. I mean, that was, and I, as we were talking, I was just thinking about the Black Panthers and how they were open and carry, you know, they were following the laws, they were making sure that they had their guns, and they were considered a, a threat. To the government, yep. their threat. And so, you know, they were, FBI shut them down. Um, Mike Wolf, on one hand, there should be stronger, more consistent regulations on gun ownership. On the other hand, I'm not sure I trust the police to be the only ones with the guns. Right. And then, uh, uh, yeah. And then, Mike Winter, do we, do we have a well regulated militia? <laughs> Question mark. Uh, then you do not even get the right to bear arms part. It is simple. Um, Mike Wolf says, treat guns like cars. Jeanette Brown says, I understand people's desire to own guns more than I ever expected to. I never expected to as a matter, as a mother, and now I sometimes think I should because I'm a mother. And I want to be able to defend my kids if necessary. We had a very divisive place in U.S. history and is not unreasonable, unreasonable for reasonable people to want to be able to protect themselves at the same time we're in the midst of a mental health crisis, and more guns means more deaths. Gun ownership should be at least as closely monitored as driving, the minimum. Uh, Jeanette Brown says, we don't trust the police for a reason. Uh, Sherry Blaine says, I was about to type a comment going on in, about Canada's laws, but then the topic of, trusting, of trust surrounding the police came up, and I stopped to think about what that world would feel like. Tough topic indeed. Um, and I have George. to say, Johnny, the Canadian government, the Canadian authorities, law enforcement have had their share of missteps. And I mean, they, they fucked up. They, they, they have historically also. Yeah. This is not solely an American thing, but it's, yeah. I think it's just the ease of access to these weapons and ammunition that makes a powder keg, a powder keg situation. And that's why you have the highest number of mass shootings per capita you america's number one number one and you yeah. crush it nobody else will ever we can combine 
the rest of the world. And I don't know that we could even, if this was an Olympic event, it's yours. You've got it, bar none. Yeah, I'm looking at the comments online. I may have belittled the significance of when I said the FBI shut them down. Uh, they did more than that. They, when they, by, I mean, when I say shut them down, they killed them. They killed many yeah. of the Black Panthers. Um, yeah. So um, that's that's the society you know we are in, and it's it's just a difficult difficult thing to deal with. All right, we got to talk about. Rob, sorry, I, just want to, I do appreciate Rob's like perspective because it almost is like not that we should strive to be Canada, but <laughs> a lot of like they have a lot of laws that make sense if you were an enlightened being or if you were somebody who just got along and just kind of was with the flow of things up to speed. I would say take at the look take a look at the laws and the gun laws in Australia and the restrictions that they have there because they had um, their last mass shooting was. 80s or 90s and after it occurred they imposed harsh restrictions on firearms very similar to what we have in canada and it really took a bite out of that trend i and i understand the cultural implications i understand the issues with people not trusting the current law enforcement system as, as it is and it's mark is broken in it's, so many it, ways. it's and that's why it's such a tough issue i mean that's why i don't like the second amendment being there because you can't really address the difficulties in society today the way they need to be addressed because it's just like this this one standard of you have the right to bear arms and that's it and there, there's you can't really create the proper laws to deal with the issue um or, yeah. or even the complexity of the issue is, is more accurate yeah um yeah.